Hi guys, welcome to Susie and Friends. Now, a couple of months ago, we showed you how to make Play-Doh. We also showed you how to make gluten-free Play-Doh. One day soon, we'll show you how to make slime, but I won't do that because it's not there yet. And right now, we're going to show you how to make a salt dough, which is like Play-Doh, but even easier, and it lasts longer because you bake it. You can make ornaments, you can make all kinds of things with it. Shall I show you how to make it? Instead of just talking about it? <laughs> Good idea. Okay, so you need two cups of flour and a big bowl. The flour goes into the big bowl. Then you put in a cup of salt and then you put in water. Now I've got three quarters of a cup of water here but you might not need that all. It depends on the flour, it depends on the day, it depends on the water even. So let's pour some in and start stirring it and find out how much we'll really need. Now you could probably get in there with your fingers straight away, but it would be really messy and it would stick to your fingers. I like to start with a wooden spoon and then, oh, yep, I need more water. But start with the wooden spoon and then get in there with my hands. Great, so you only need enough water so that the flour and the salt all starts to clump together. Mmm, nice clumping. Could probably do with a little bit more water, but you don't want too much because otherwise you have to add more flour and then if you add too much flour, you have to add more water. You get the idea. So, a little bit more water. And I think now I might get in there with my hands and give it a good old squelch. Let's see. Yeah. Take it off the spoon. Here we go, and then get in there with my hands. Ooh. Mm. You can see when there's lots of water, it sticks to your hand. But very soon, it'll all come off my hand as that wet dough absorbs some of the dry flour. Pour it onto the dry flour down the bottom and then add it in like this. Great. Well, once it's all off the bottom of the bowl and it's all together in a big clump, you can pretty much take it out of the bowl and put it maybe on a plastic mat or something like that. That'll stop it sticking to your bench. because now you need the dough. Oh yes, you really need it. But you have to knead it to make it so it's stretchy and you can roll it. And this is how you knead it. You push it down onto itself like this. You need big strong muscles for this. And you need to knead the dough for about two or three minutes. So let's use some tally magic like that. Now this is much stretchier and smoother. You can still feel the grains of salt, but that's because they haven't dissolved. And they won't. Not like Play-Doh, so it's a bit more gritty. Feels quite different. Anyway, what we do now, we break off a chunk and we find our rolling pin and we want to get it all about the same thickness across. So, nice and flat. This dough is much thicker and more solid, more firm than the other doughs. So it's quite hard to push down. See if you can get a helping hand to give you a hand with this. You don't need to make your dough too thin, but the thinner it is, the quicker it's going to cook. The thinner you get it though, the more likely it is to break. So, not too thick, not too thin, just right. That'll probably about do it. 
And what I'll do now is use my cookie cutter and maybe make some star shapes. Press right down to the tray and then give it a wiggle. If you start at the edge like that, then you've got room to make some other things. Oh, maybe a Christmas tree. Have a listen and see if you can hear the salt being crushed by the cookie cutter. And maybe even if I'm extra lucky, will it fit, will it fit? Oh, just, there we go. A gingerbread man. Now with this dough, there's no flavour and there's so much salt that you really don't want to eat it. And when it finishes cooking, it's going to be so tough and so hard, it'll probably break your teeth, so you don't really want to eat it. But there you go, it does look pretty cool. Okay, I'll make a little bit more room with some more tally magic. If only tidying was always this easy, eh? <laughs> but here we go, here's some others that I've already finished and I'll just slide these across onto the baking paper. I don't always use baking paper, but last time I had one of them stick and it was really hard to get off because there's no oil or butter or anything like that in here. So I'll use baking paper this time. And now these need to go into the oven for about an hour at about 150 degrees. You wanna hang around here for an hour? Well, you could do, you could go and have a look at some of the other videos, or how about some more tally magic? Sounds good to me. Just one thing, before I put them into the oven, I might like to, and I do want to, make a hole in some of them, okay? I'm going to use a bamboo skewer, and I'm going to stick a hole through the top so I can thread a piece of string through it once it's finished cooking, so I can hang it on the tree. Here we go. Bamboo skewer is just perfect for it, but you could use the end of a thin paintbrush or a toothpick. You just need to wobble the toothpick round a bit. Here we go. And you need to make the hole big enough to fit whatever cord you want to put in there. You could just put cotton through, or you could put a pipe cleaner through, or whatever you like, a bit of ribbon. There you go. Whoop! And those can go into the oven too. Right, here we go. Okay, so out of the oven, in fact, these were prepared yesterday. They are very cold now and I can pick up the whole tray, but check out how hard these things are. You do not want to eat them, even if you dunk them in a cup of tea. I still don't think you want to eat them. They're really salty and yucky, but they look good, don't they? And they will look even better with some paint on them. Here are a couple that I prepared earlier as well. Christmas tree, star, and some baby stars. What should we do this time? Maybe another Christmas tree? Well, I've got some green paint here. I'm just gonna paint it on. Use acrylic paint, and I'm just using washable paint. Always a good idea, because you don't want paint everywhere. And if you do, you want to be able to wash it off. You don't have to have a green tree. You could have any colour tree you like. And of course, you don't have to make these decorations just for Christmas. You can make any kinds of decorations. How about I'll show you something else. See the sparkles on this Christmas tree here? That was made with glitter paint. I'll use the paint here on this star. Just need another paintbrush. And the glitter paint, just paint it on like that. Best to wait until the first layer of paint has dried before you paint this on. But the paint dries really quickly. Now if you want to keep your decorations for years and years and years, you can leave them like that, but you've got a better chance of them surviving if you put um, some varnish or something like that over the top. You could even put something like a clear drying glue over the top and that'll help it last. Okay, so there you go. You can set about decorating them any way you like. Now these ones, I don't have 
a hole in them. So what I'm going to have to do is either put some cotton or some thread or maybe even a pipe cleaner around there and twist it so it becomes a loop or I'll use this one here because it's dry. I'll take the tree, turn it over and hot glue gun a paper clip onto the back. So I'll just put some glue on first. You don't have to use a hot glue gun, you can use any strong glue. I've got my hot glue gun at the ready, so I'll just use that. A little bit extra, make sure it stays. <laughs> don't think that's going to escape anytime soon. And now I can either put that onto the branch of the tree, or I can thread something through there. And there we go, a lovely little ornament. Cool, another very cool idea for you. Throughout the week, I'll put some more ideas up. Something for you to fill in time with and something for you to decorate your house with or use as gifts for people. Have you got your gifts sorted? Christmas is a time of giving. Even if it's just big, big hugs, oh, sloppy kisses, mwah, and lots of thanks. It's a good thing to give, isn't it? Okay, we'll keep coming back because we will have lots more crafts and if you want to check out some of the things that I've already done, then check them out here. We'll see you soon. Have a great day. See ya. Remember, if you enjoy this Susie and Friends video clip, you can like us, you can subscribe to us, and you're more than welcome to share us with everyone you know. <laughs> we'll have another clip for you next week. Until then, have a fabulous week, and if you want more information, head to www.susie.co.nz. See ya. <laughs>